All right, I have a video here for you if you struggle with sleeping problems at night. Uh, this is something I've been looking for for a long time, a system that really works well. I uh, did a video a few years ago on segmented sleep. That kind of worked for a little bit of time, but not really. And it was just like there's something I'm missing here. And uh, I've been trying this now. I thought, you know, again, what one of the things my wife and I do, we will do research and we will try things on ourselves in our own lives before I recommend it to you out there. All right. This works. It works very, very well. All right. Um, and so I'm going to tell you how to do this. Okay. The man who I got this from, I'll give him credit because he does a lot of good stuff. He says a lot of good things, but I have to give a warning. His name is Dr. John Bergman. I've talked about him in some other studies. Uh, he's a chiropractor and he's also in a natural health and things and, and uh, extremely intelligent man but he uses profanity in a lot of his videos. He's into some new agey stuff, and he also uh, recommends veganism, not really like cramming it down your throat, but I mean, he'll still, still talk about the benefits of grass-fed meats and things, and uh, raw milk and, and things. But, uh, you know, I watch these things, I experiment with these things, and I kind of filter out the bad, and I bring this out to you as Bible-believing Christians. Okay, now, here's what you do. All right, if you want to get really good sleep, um, you need to go to bed early. That's a big part of it. And I just want to kind of preface this with that and say, I used to make the mistake because of, you know, I have a little boy and I work from home. So a lot of times my wife is busy doing recipes or doing whatever else. And I'll, I want to play with my son. I want to be around my son. But, you know, it really cuts into my work schedule. A lot of times because I only sometimes I only get three or four hours a day to work and what I was doing in the past is I would stay up I'd put him to bed at 8 o'clock 830 somewhere in there then I'd stay up till you know midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning doing computer stuff and then I go to bed and I'm like getting terrible sleep uh, for about a year most of 2016 I was getting usually about four to five hours of sleep at night and it was really affecting my preaching and things and just my brain was just constantly foggy and just couldn't get my thoughts together and it was bad and I knew you know that I got to correct this but I wasn't really sure how to do it and what I did is I basically reversed my philosophy instead of saying I have to stay up because I have to I have a lot of work to do I said I'm going to go to bed because I have a lot of work to do in other words, it's more important for me to get a good night of sleep and wake up really early in the morning rather than trying to stay up really late and then try to get sleep. And uh, it works way better. Here's what you do. Okay, well, there are seven steps here. Number one, journaling before bed. All right, I don't have a pencil here handy, but a pencil or a pen. I get one here. Okay, pencil, paper, writing. I don't mean on your iPad or something like this and doing some kind of thing. Pencil and paper. Write. Why? Because what's happening is you are doing something with your hand and it's making connection between the brain and your hand moving. Okay, that creates new cell growth up here. It's an activity. You see, it's not you passively sitting there watching a video. You're writing something with your hand. Write a letter to somebody. Journal. You know, like if you have a diary or whatever else, journal. Say, what did you do that day? Or write down some thoughts, you know, on, on scriptures that you've read or whatever else. Writing. Very important. 15 minutes. Okay? Spend 15 minutes writing with a pencil and paper or a pen and paper would be fine too okay read a next that's step one read a paper book for the next 15 minutes okay read a paper book i did not say kindle paper book you say i mean an ebook on my computer no no paper book i can think of one that would be good to spend your time reading and of course, there's plenty of other ones out there that you can read as well. Know what I mean? Paper book. You say, why is that? It's so important. Okay, I can read an ebook. Big deal. No, no, no. Here's why. Because you see, a blue screen is artificial light. 
artificial light fools your brain into thinking it's daytime. So what happens is your brain does not produce melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that is there to start making you feel drowsy, making you feel tired. Okay? That's why if you, you are on the internet right up until the time, you know, you shut the computer down, you go in, you brush your teeth, you know, whatever else, and go to the bathroom, and then you go in bed, you're laying there just like, I can't sleep. Yeah, because you don't you didn't produce some melatonin that you needed, and it's going to be a long time before that happens. All right, so very 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 important. Okay, um, no computers, no computer internet type of stuff. Um, you know what I do just to give you an example, we'll be on the computers and stuff like that for a number of hours in the afternoon while my son's sleeping, and then when he gets up. We'll go down, we'll play with them, we'll have a good time and stuff like that. Shut the computers down before we go down. And uh, we'll have supper, and then we'll have a little bit of time in the evening. He goes to bed, and then, you know, a lot of times I'm getting ready for bed not too much longer after that. Okay, you want to start this about 9 to 9.30, somewhere in there. 15 minutes of writing, 15 minutes of reading a paper book. And it doesn't have to be the, the, your King James Bible, it can be another book or whatever else, that's fine. But a paper book. Okay, number three, either wear a sleeping mask, nightshades, or like, you know, nightshades are the black mask, or you need to really, really get the light out of your room. In other words, what we do is we have black, like a, I have an army wool blanket, it's black, and you know, I put that over the one window and then some other blankets that are black, put them over the windows. You want to drown out all light, okay? Um, why? Because if there's light in the room, what happens is while you're sleeping, rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep, if you hear about that, your eyes will open up periodically and close again. And if your eyes open up and there's light in the room, it can trigger your brain to become active. So you don't want any light. Okay? That's also very important. Um, and another thing it, that I learned, and I've been doing this now for quite a few months and it, it helped majorly even before I knew this formula and that is no alarm clock with the big bright digital lettering. Okay, if you have an alarm clock or something, tape over top of that the numbers there. Because I remember, you know, I've, I've, I mean I had my alarm clock for years and years and years and years and years. Um, and uh, I mean back shortly after I got out of high school. I mean we're talking probably 25 years no, not 20. Yeah, well, this would be my 25th year out of high school. Um, but probably about 20. No, because it would have been back in high school. But whatever. The whole point is uh, getting rid of that alarm clock, getting it out of the room, um, really helps a lot because you're not waking up throughout the night looking over what time is it. Oh, man, I only was sleeping for two hours. And then you lay there. Why didn't I sleep longer? I wonder why. You know, and your brain just goes. Get rid of a digital lit alarm clock. If you really want to have an alarm clock, use something that's a wind-up type of a thing. Again, we have a mantle clock that's actually in our bedroom right now, um, and I don't even hear the thing chiming at night. You know, it chimes every hour, quarter hour, half hour, three-quarter hour, every hour. You know, it just chimes. I don't even hear it most of the time. Okay, so it doesn't bother me hearing the sound there. So that's also very important. Eliminate all light. That you can. You want to slip, sleep in really pitch black darkness, right? To really get that really good sound sleep. Okay, number four, your bedtime when you go to bed, when you get into bed, needs to be between 10 p.m. and 10:30. Right? Very important. Again, this, this, there's a whole big thing on this. I'm not going to get into this, but the circadian rhythm. If if you're going to bed later than 10:30, you're starting to, your body's starting to kind of wake back up again. There's cycles that your body goes through and stuff. It's a whole other study. But go to bed 10 to 10.30. Now, if you're having sleep problems, then the next part of it is, and the part of his formula here, that you wake up between 4 and 4.30. You say, whoa, wait a second. That's only six hours of sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, what you're trying to do is you're trying to readjust your body. And you know, for a long time I was doing this, this thing of getting up between 4 and 4.30. I would wake up and look at my watch and, okay, I'm, you know, it's close. I might as well just get up a while or 
or okay, it's between four and four thirty. You can again, you can set up an alarm clock, something that you, like an old wind up type or something. It's not lit. Okay, that's also an important thing. And what you're doing is you're waking up, and you will feel very energetic. Believe it or not, you will with only six hours of sleep. But when you get into this pattern, you'll feel energetic for most of the day. Don't take any naps. That's another part of it because you want your body to be sufficiently tired by the next night. Okay, and of course you, you should be doing, you know, proper uh, health, proper nutrition and exercise as well. So that's a big part of it too. But you want to go 10 to 4, 10.30 to 4.30, one of those two, somewhere in between that. Okay, number six, within five days, if you do this faithfully, don't skip out on one of the steps. If you do this faithfully for five days, you will attain REM sleep at night. And I'll tell you what, I was kind of like, I don't know about this. I was kind of skeptical. It works very well. And my wife, too, can attest to it. I mean, she was having some really hard times sleeping and things because, you know, she was a nursing mother for over two years. And uh, so, you know, I could sleep through a lot of times when she was nursing our son. Um, and now he's weaned and everything. But, you know, she also, this thing works for her. So, I mean, it's it is phenomenal. It really works well. And this has been well over a month now. So number seven now works for me. You will have sleep mastery in 21 days. So five days it takes to get REM sleep, sleep mastery in 21 days. What is sleep mastery? Well, that's where you're basically not having to do a real set schedule type of a thing. Um, there's many times like this morning I woke up, I went to bed at like, uh, well, Last night, I went to bed at, um, I think it was right around 9.30 or so, and uh, I did not have to read. I did not have to write anything. It was just a very busy day. I was extremely tired. I mean, just, I don't think I could have written or read anything. <laughs> I went to bed and out. I mean, within probably five minutes, I, you just out, and you just sleep and sleep and sleep. Um, you know, I get up occasionally to go to the bathroom and things, but right back to sleep, and uh you know, I get up at four o'clock. I was up at four o'clock this morning and, and I've been working ever since then. Um, feel good. Feel very, very good. This, you know, tonight will come and around 9.30 to 10.30, somewhere in there, I'm going to start feeling my body's just going to be shutting down. Go in, lay down, boom, right to sleep. I mean, I literally, there's been a couple nights where I've had some spiritual warfare type attacks and things like that that I used to have these really weird dreams I'll have weird dreams and I kind of wake up and I'm like that was really weird but and my wife will say what what happened and I don't remember I mean it's just I'm sleeping so soundly now so um, I mean it, uh, let me just say this in, in conclusion here as a Christian you're always going to have some struggles with your health okay uh, that's just a teaching of scripture uh, there's no such thing as having perfect health and never getting sick and never having anything wrong. Um, but that's not the point of staying in good shape as a Christian. You stay in good shape so that you can have a good quality of life, so that you can run the race that the Lord sets before you. So you can get out there and you can witness to people and you can be a, have a strong testimony to the lost. But if you're sick all the time and you're depressed and down and just, uh, you know, you're not going to have... It's not going to go too good for you. So um, I know many of you start, struggle with sleeping issues and things like that. And I've been wanting to put this together for a while. But I just thought I need to give this thing some time to make sure it really works. And uh, I really have been impressed with this one. And um, so try it out. Okay. Um, like I said, you know, if, you, if you're going to watch Dr. John Bergman, he makes some really good points. But I just, I can't recommend, I can't put links to his videos and stuff because I don't want people thinking I'm for the profanity and I'm for the new agey stuff and whatever else. Um, but, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that you can learn from. And uh, as a Christian, you stick by the book and you judge things by the book. And um, you see a guy like that and you say, well, you know, it's good what he's saying, but, you know, hopefully he'll get saved someday, you know. So... That's going to be it for the video here. Uh, try it out if you're having some trouble sleeping.